Welcome back to the Rhino Tutorials. Uh, today we're going to talk about cutting sections. One thing I like to do to um, before I even actually cut the section is to set up a layer specifically dedicated to the section cut um, so that you can help organize your lines and your model. Uh, so you can cut a section in any of the viewports. Um, it's usually helpful to draw the line of your section in one of the orthographic viewports. Um, to cut a section, you simply type in the command section. It brings up some sub-choices. Um, the first thing you have to do is to select the object that you're going to be cutting a, a section through. So I'll select the model that I have here. Um, then you can choose to either assign the layers to the section based on the current layer that you're on, which is what I want because I'm already in my section layer, or you can choose to make it based on the input object, so the object that you're cutting through. Um, the other choice you need to choose is if you want the lines that are generated by the section cut to be uh, connected in a section plane um, or poly surface or not to be connected or at all. And alternatively or in addition you can also choose to have those lines grouped together um, which in a model like this isn't going to make a big difference but when you have a much more complex model it can be very helpful to keep different parts of the sections together if it's cutting through multiple components or poly surfaces. Um, so this all looks good so I'm going to click done and then I'm prompted to actually draw the line of my section. Um, so you can do this precisely or more freeform. I'm going to use the top view. I'm going to hold shift to make it straight and I'm going to cut my section and you can see um, before the commands even done you can see the section being outlined in my object. Um, that looks good so I'm going to say done um, and you can see the section superimposed over the model. Um, to kind of get a better view of it, I can click that section which has been grouped together and I can move it using the gumball to the side or with the move command and now I can get kind of a better view of that section separate from the model and you can get a good view of that in the front and you can then use that to, to generate a two-dimensional drawing. There are a couple of other commands that are very related to the section command that can help you um, cut sections in different ways through your model. So one of those commands is the contour command. The contour command allows you to cut a series of sections along your model in a certain direction with a certain set increment uh, between each section. This can be very useful for analyzing uh, a complex model and figuring out how those sections modulate over, a, over an axis. And it can also be useful for preparing a file for the laser cutter in which you want to stack, let's say, um, several different sheets of flat material to create a kind of contour. So in order to use this command, it works very much like the section command. You choose your object, you specify uh, what layer you want it to be on. Again, I want it to be on my current section layer. You can choose to have the, uh, the components grouped together along those planes. And then you're prompted to select a base point um, and a direction for the contours to be cut. So to start out, I'm just going to choose the very corner of my model and I'm going to make a straight line. Um, and I'm going to say one inch between each contour. And you'll see that a whole series of sections were cut, each with one inch between, um, along this model. And this model is fairly simple. Um, if I move it to the side, you can see that um, you know, most of those sections are exactly the same um, because, of the, because of how the model is built. However, um, even though this model is kind of an extrusion which makes the contours very similar, I could also make the contours not along, not orthogonal to the model. So I'll do this again, and this time I'll have the contours actually cut along a diagonal according to the model. I'm again going to choose one inch, and you can see how um, these contours now change because of how they're cut along the model. And this can be, again, a very useful way for analyzing just little parts of your model, especially as they change along a set distance. There's a third and more dynamic way to cut a section in Rhino as well, which is using the clipping plane command. The clipping plane allows you to actually move a more dynamic plane along your model 
uh, and see how the section cut changes as you move it. And you can also take 2D views of the clipping plane, clipping your model at any point. It's important when you start your clipping plane that you are noticing which viewport you're, you're actually drawing the clipping plane in, because the viewport that you draw it in will be the one viewport that the cut is actually generated. Um, so I'm going to start out and I'm going to do it in my perspective view. Uh, and you can use the gumball or you can use the move command to move your clipping plane along your model and see how the section changes as you do that. Um, and that can be a very useful way um, just to understand the kind of spatial complexities of your model and also a way to set up a specific view, a very specific cut with which you can kind of make a 2D drawing of. The nice thing about the clipping plane is you can also rotate it, which can be yet another useful way to start to better understand how your model works. Now you'll notice it's only in the perspective view that the actual cut is being drawn. Even though the clipping plane moves and you can see um, where it is referencing a point in an orthogonal viewport, it's not actually showing a cut in those viewports. It's only the viewport that you actually draw the original clipping plane in that will show that cut. So if you want to see, say, a clipping plane in the front view, you'll have to uh, delete this clipping plane and draw a new one. So we'll do that now. This time we'll draw it in the front view. And you can move it in any view. Um, and now you can see the cut being generated in the front view only. And in this way, you can specify the kind of view you want the clipping plane to create. 